Welcome to part 7 of the Sonic Unleashed Let's Play. Alright, so, now that the ranting is over, at least I hope, and the, the uh, well, long, unspagonian night stage is over, let's press on to Professor Pickles' office, and we've been, been given a camera. So, let's head to the laboratory. Later. Seriously, pointless fade to black. Yes, this is so much fun! I love it! Hey, what's the big idea? Oh, look at that! I really know how to dance! Come on, babe, let's dance the night away! Reminding you, that is Jason Griffith. Wow, is there some kind of party going on? No, something's not right here. Of creeps out there. Okay, yep. Uh, that is another gimmick you can do in the hub world. Well, it's, well, in terms of side missions, anyway. I mean, there's the usual, you know, you talk to somebody, they request a side mission from you, and they, and you get to do the, well, side mission in the act. Well, and you get to do, well, a side mission. This is another type of side mission, though. Oh, this is. Obviously, this is this can only happen in the nighttime. And whenever you talk to someone and you see the the purple clouds, clouds brewing, strewing, or you see the purple clouds around their heads, it's then you should then that's your opportunity to take a picture. When you do that, then you have to then you have to fight in a wave of enemies, or at least a set number of enemies, at least in a specific part of the hub world. Well, and then you get to complete well the extra. The exorcism. Yeah, apparently this is the thing you can do. You can all. This is actually another thing that was cut from the Wii version because, well, it's technically there in the Wii version, but it's only there as a short quick time event. And so, this is pretty much an HD. This is pretty much an HD uh, HD exclusive. Huh? What? What was I just doing? <clears throat> uh, hey! Wait up! Just now, was that Sonic? Ah, that should calm things down a bit around here. Chalk another one up for Sonic. You know Sonic? Well, of course. He was here just a moment ago. Tell me what's happened to him. Please, tell me everything you know. I'll happily explain everything over a plate of cucumber sandwiches. <laughs> okay. And that's it. Oh, talk to Tails. Let's see, let's see what he has says. Alright, yeah. <laughs> this is basically saying... How the whole, whole camera, how the whole camera feature, or the Exorcist uh, side missions work? Just walk up to somebody, walk and talk to, walk up and talk to somebody. He flashed it, he take a picture, and and you get to do the Exorcism side mission. And uh, bear in mind, you do have two flashes. You can upgrade to four, I think. You can upgrade the flashes. I just don't know how to. If anyone. And knows how to how to do it in the comments section, then please please tell me, cause I would, because who knows? I would love I would like to hear that. I wouldn't mind to hear that. Not at all. <laughs> oh, of course we have to head back to Professor Pickles' lab, and we and we have to talk to him. Oh yeah, I I think I I don't know I think I may have got to mention this. I think I I. I think I mentioned... Actually, I think I may have mentioned this, but just for the sake of refresher, even though it was like one video ago. Uh, you can buy stuff for Professor Pickle's lab. Like, you can, you can buy a... Like, you can buy a bookshelf. 
to look at concept art, uh, or the TV to look at at the to look at cutscenes you collected, and and, and a record player here for the well musical discs. I may have mentioned this before. I'm sorry if I do, but I have a ten. You know what? Now that I think about it, I have a tendency to do that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now we have to head over. Head on over to Chenan. And that sound. That sounds too obvious enough, or clear enough. I keep saying obvious. Yeah. <laughs> S okay. What to talk about? Uh. I want to mention that in some hub worlds, for those that are complaining that hub worlds like this are too big for to walk around, um, you can. There are grind rails, at least in the like when you're playing as daytime Sonic. There's there's certain rails you can grind on just to make. There's certain rails you can grind on, but and but the only one that was really that's really effective is the one in in Spagonia. You there are some rails you can grind on in. In Haliska, but it's so pointless. <laughs> this it, it, for the most part, again, these kind of hub worlds I really don't mind. They're small, they are small, like they're not big. It, so, they're not big, and you can. Well, you well technically your speed, well technically your abilities are limited. But yeah, I don't mind these hub worlds too much. Okay, so now we're in Chenan, and clearly based off China. And I, well, more ancient China, uh, I believe. It, how, or how it looked back then. Like this place looks a bit ancient. It, into me. Uh, apologies for, apologies in case if I have, have a case of stupidity on me. But that's how, that's how the way I see it, or how I look at it. Don't call me out. And I know what you're think. And to those viewers, they're starting thinking the wrong way. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Don't take it the wrong way. <laughs> All right. Now what's different about this hub world is that uh, we can't really immediately go to the gate. Well, technically, we couldn't go to the gate in Spagonia either, but in terms of a case like this where we can't really go in- We can't really go into the gate until we talk to one of the, well, civilians. But actually, the gate- someone is actually guarding the Gaia gate. It, so, so in order to do that, we had to talk- Oh, excuse me. <laughs> we had to talk to Lin. One of the NPCs just to gain, just to gain permission, just so we can, just so we can enter or at least get past this guy. And voila! <laughs> Basically, well, the backstory here is that the the elder has gone missing, searching for the treasure, and now we have to go find him. And that's pretty, and that's all she wrote. Well, as far as this one, well, as far as this getting into the guy gate goes, that's all she wrote. <laughs> I think at this point, ain't the game just gives up and it's like, you know what? No padding. Just head to the just head to the Gaia gate. So before we head to the nighttime stage, H, let's actually head in. Let's actually you turn this in. Let's actually turn the. Well, we already turned the hourglass, but. Let's let's head into the daytime. Voila. Because in the daytime, we have a new power up to get. And this is actually sort of a new power up, not so much in not so much seen in traditional platformers, but it is an upgrade to Sonic or at least an extension to Sonic's abilities. We have the Erbu shoes. This and and but like all the others, they sound it's pretty sim- they are pretty simple. Well, in terms of their concept, and I died as a result. <laughs> uh, 
Let's try that again. But now that we've got the air boost shoes, I want to bring up a point. You, you see, and it's the homing attack. You see, in games beforehand, like even ga even in games like in 06 or Adventure 1 and 2, the homing attack was always is whatever, but was always well was always assigned to the jump button. So it's like you jump, and then in midair you hit hit the jump button again and do the homing attack. Sounds simple. Sounds like simple stuff, right? <laughs> hey, but in this game, for some reason, the homing attack is mapped to the square button. Instead of just, you know, XX, the homing attack is now mapped to the square button. Now, granted, it is a little weird. It is very weird here to get used to, but it isn't really so much of a big deal. However, it only be it becomes more of a problem when you when you get to, when you get the air boost shoes and above. Because, because again, the air boost shoes let Sonic do, do the Sonic boost in the air. But what does it map to? You guessed it, it's the square button. And so sometimes you're gonna... So, there, so don't be surprised if there's gonna be any occasions where... So don't be surprised if there's any occasions where... There you accidentally air boost to your death. Alright, so this is one of the cases where, where there's where I had where I don't have enough moon medals or medals to access the stage. Thankfully I locked out. Because as in the Because in the Because we just need to, we just need to find two moon medals. And conveniently enough there's two moon medals in the stage. Or at least in this Gaia gate. Like, see, there's one. <laughs> there's one. <laughs> you know, Chip, you couldn't. It, it's probably not a good idea to drink ink shit that you already that you don't know. <laughs> oh, that shit could be poisonous. <laughs> it don't don't matter by color. Hey, poisonous? You're dead. <laughs> 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 Uh, okay, yeah, that's not a good idea. So here I am, putzing about, looking for that other... Looking for that... <clears throat> Where's that damn moon metal? Nah. Nah, I don't like that. Ah. <sighs> Alright, just looking through the dark alleyways. Oh, got a cassette. Eggman again. <laughs> huh. Okay. Now I kind of went. Hmm. Just pointlessly e platforming. I do like how I do like how the I do like these Gaia gates though. Oh, well, they help. Oh, if you're not really doing anything, at least for the Werehog, I think it it's kind of practice. It lets you practice up up on what the Werehog can do in terms of his abilities. Well, there's not really so much enemies, but there but there's enough platforming you can do. So there's that other soon moon metal. And there we go. We can now access the stage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so with all that said and done, let's head into Dragon Road Dragon Road Night Act 1. And of course, just like any other Werehog stage, it's gonna be long. And, and what's even worse is that, yeah, well, I already covered my rant, but I don't, I'm not sure what I want to talk about. I was thinking about getting a guest commentator in, but I realized how, but I kind of learned my lesson after Shadow the Hedgehog. So, in other words, I don't want this to be a to be a cluttered mess. <laughs> All right, so Dragon Road Knight. Ooh, ooh, let's see. Hmm. Well, there is a. Well, we are going to be introducing some new enemy types, and this is one of those examples where, where in the in the HD version, and sometimes, well, mostly on occasions, on most occasions in the in the HD version, you can at least pass by in most enemies. 
or at least you can bypass most fights or brawls, so you don't have, so you just progress on with the stage. There are times where you have have to beat up every enemy in the in the stage just to, you know, just to just to progress. Yes, but in the Wii version, in pretty much every fight in that version, you have. You have to beat every enemy in the area, and it and it just pads out the stage even longer. Who, like, who would Dimps or Sega or whoever was designing in the Wii version thought was a good idea? <laughs> Come on. So anyway, we have these flower enemies. He's that we've already seen in Missouri, but they're pretty they're pretty pathetic. If we can take him down not in a few hits. It's and I don't wanna I don't wanna move that lever. <laughs> Alright, so let's actually break this wall for a little bit. It because here this is actually one of the more optional This is actually one of the optional brawl brawling fights in the well, brawl segments in the in the entire game. Well, in terms of the Werehog stages, this is one of the more optional Werehog levels in the game. Well, optional Werehog brawl segments in the game. And so far, there's only very, there's actually very few. There's act, there actually few, there's actually few and very, very far in between. But you know if. If you want to get the sun medals or moon medals, well, then you don't. You know what? You don't have to do these. <laughs> these. Well, actually, if you want to get, well, actually, you kind of have to do these anyway. If you want to get the most out of your sun or moon medals, well, I just wish that in the daytime stages, is the sun and moon medals weren't so hidden away <laughs> in the daytime levels. Or even in like, or even in like, if the metal is like in front of you, it's very easy to just run past it, it only, only to not realize it for maybe like a few seconds later. That's an, that's an, that's an annoyance. I don't know what is. Thankfully, though, if you do die, or in any, if you do die but manage to collect the sun metals. The sun medals don't reset. I have I'm not sure if that worked. Now, as far as resetting the stage goes, I'm not sure if the sun medals respawn. In, I'm not sure if the medals respawn in that case. But I'm not too sure. I haven't tested that out, and I don't want. And I don't want to know. It's better. It's better to not find out. <laughs> Might as well get into how. All the sun metals and moon metals work in the Wii version. Now, in terms of how, yeah, in terms of how the sun and moon metals work in the Wii version, it, you, and it, you don't have to manually collect them. Instead, they're really, they're actually based on your rank. In, in the daytime, when, like when you get an S rank, I guess daytime Sonic, like you get, you collect a grand total of three moon metals. And if you, and vice versa, and the same, and vice versa for the, the werehog, for the werehog, at least for the sun melt. Pass me, where are you going? <laughs> oh man, I didn't notice that metal. Shit. <laughs> ah. God, I suck sometimes. <laughs> Uh, I apologize, I really do. Well, thankfully, in games like College and Generations and Lost World, well, like, with the whole red ring system, at least those are optional. You don't have to collect every red ring unless it's for 100% completion. <laughs> and, well, granted, it, the amount, there's, a, there's a lot more sun, mel sun and moon metals for you to collect anyway. Hey, so you're not really so in this game you're not really forced to get a hundred percent in either. Hey, there's only like you only have to collect like like as far as the sun metals go, there's only like you only have to collect 120 these sun metals. 
Oh, and this part can be a pain in the ass, but at the but at the same time, I blew through it no problem. I'm, uh, one of the problems with the Werehog, actually, if, just to change the subject, one of the problems with the Werehog is that when it comes to the platforming, and sometimes the camera, sometimes the camera doesn't give you a good view. Oh, and and sometimes it'll aim straight down. Um, not to mention, there's also a lack of drop shadow. Well, I think there is... I think sh the Werehog does cast a shadow, but the way of how the graphics engine works, it's like... There's no cartoony drop shadow, just to let you know oh, what you're about to land on. And, and I fail this miserably. Oh. It's like... Ah, can't believe it. So you know what? Suicide. <laughs> it because, because there's actually an alternate pathway you can take, take by use by grappling onto these enemies. Booyah, like that. And there's a. You collect the sun and moon metal, well as a reward. Do I get it? Yes. So in terms of enemies that were actually introduced in this stage, age and beyond, first we're introduced to these to these wasp enemies. He's and let me just say that this and the other enemy type that's also introduced here, these are some of the more annoying enemies in the whole game because they constantly like like the because they constantly like to fly upwards and slowing the battle down. Um and. But like, like we'll, like we'll see it later on in the, like we'll see it later on in the, in the, in the later Werehog stages. Oh yeah, and, and that pathway I took with the dragon, when I was running along the dragon in statue. Oh, that's, that's real with, it fire and saw blades. It's when when Sonic is catched up when Son when when Sonic is caught on fire when Sonic is on fire yeah, I'm I'm pretty it does last a little bit yeah, enough for it to sap health but in order to, but obviously if you want to douse it, if you want to get rid of it then you want then you want to find a patch of water or at least it's a, a puddle of water that should pull you down. Also, in terms of the enemy type that's introduced, we're introduced to these wizard enemies that are also very annoying. And because they cast spells, they can they can be caught on fire. And and they're also one of those enemy types that can heal themselves. I don't know. I don't think I'll be able to show it off and uh I don't know. I I don't think Ain't the wizard enemies do heal themselves? Wait a minute, I think they do. Well, I think in the next, in the very next Werehog stage, which that we go into, I think that happens. And by, by the way, that jump I tried to make, that is so picky. <laughs> it's hard to make that jump. Uh, and what's even worse is that there's like, metals. Well, that are mandatory to collect on the other side. It's hard to make that jump. Uh, unless you have to be you have to be very precise about it, but I can never get it down. So, let's upgrade our stuff, like that. And now we are actually going to be going to the very first Werehog boss. Enjoy the cutscene. Well, after the loading screen. So, let, let me, so let the cutscene introduce you to the very first Werehog boss of the game. Alright, so, oh, well, 
Oh, the game kind of spoiled the name. Okay, but anyway, we are now facing up against it's the Dark Guy of Phoenix. I'm gonna say right now though is that when it comes to boss battles, like I like I actually do like like the daytime boss battles. You know, you know, running running up to the boss and whatnot. But in terms of but I think in terms of boss battles, I don't see you know, like the Werehog. I'm not a fan of the Werehog in terms of stages, but in terms of boss battles, I think the I think this is where the Werehog shines more. Yeah, because these play out more like a traditional boss battle. I mean, again, I am I do like the the bosses in Sonic in the daytime levels. Well, I think they're I think they're pretty cool and fun and energetic. It, but you know. Oh, I think I think the traditional. One, I think this is more of a tr traditional. I I still like the the more traditional boss battle, or at least the more traditional boss battle. So, oh, anyway, since the Dark Guy of Phoenix is on fire, or we have to wait until it gets close. Oh, it's like that, or like if it's in the center of the ring, we have to wait until it gets close. And once once it gets close, we have to throw these. These jugs of water at at him, and so we can get him to cool down. Um, I guess the annoying part about this boss fight is that he does send out a lot of, lot of projectiles, and when you do canceling it, you know, and it cancels out the uh, a, your attempt to throw the jug of the water or at him, but. Hey, you know, once he's down, once he's down, once the flames are down, go and beat the crap out of him. <laughs> um, and it, and when he, and if you reach a lot, and if you reach that line in his health bar, er, you do a quick time event. This boss fight has three phases, it's, and the quick time events, and, and as far as the quick time events though goes, they, er, with each quick time event, and you do, with e within each phase. It just adds. <laughs> it's and, and it's not like the quick time event and stay. It's not like the buttons stay. Or like, it's not like they say the stay the same buttons in terms of like the actual buttons you need to press in that specific quick time event. And it it changed. It random. It's random. Then again, there'd be no challenge. It's one of the only times where I find the shield useful. And and those are the projectiles I'm talking about. There we go. <laughs> other, than, other than that, the I mean yes, the this boss fight is pretty simple. But wait until he gets close and finishes his attacks. Ex wait, douse him with water. Wait for him to land on one of these these pedestals. I'll beat the crap out of him. Quick time event. Then use then do the quick time event. And that uh, again, this is a pretty simple boss fight. And this is one of the only times where you actually have to mash the mash the button in for the sake of a quick time event. Now the Strike three monster! Yeah, son yeah, Sonic like the Werehog is supposed to say something. Or at least talk or at least talk to the boss, but for some reason it glitched out. I don't understand that, but <laughs> you know, uh, that's really weird. I don't think the other bosses glitch out like that in terms of the dialogue. You all right? Y yes, thank you. Whoa! What? So that is it for part 7, see you guys for part 8.
The moment the temple lit up, the beast woke up. It appears he's come back to his senses. I see. I'll bet your job is to, <laughs> to guard the Chaos Emerald Temple. You must have gone berserk when the Emeralds lost their power. Well, I'm glad you're back. Want some chocolate? Progress on the Dark Gaia powered Eggman land construction systems. Current status is 27% complete. Progress is significantly behind projected timetable. Presumed cause of delay is Dark Gaia's dispersion across the globe. Oh, of all the lazy, here I go to the trouble of waking that Dark Gaia thing up, and it causes me nothing but delays. Dark Gaia has yet to reach maturity within the planet's core. Ergo, it was still incomplete at the time of its awakening. Ergo, it was unable to sustain its own weight upon its release. Ergo, it scattered around the world. I don't want to hear about its weight issues. So what if I gave it a bit of a sudden awakening? This is unacceptable! Ergo, this is the repercussion of your hasty actions. What was that? I'm having a bad enough day as it is! First that professor runs off with the Gaia manuscripts, and now the planet's coming back together! That, Doctor, is the result of the power of the Chaos Emeralds, which you discarded along with Sonic. Ergo, another repercussion of your hasty actions. Quiet, you junkie! That was all part of my plan! Part of the big picture! Where's the fun in having my plan succeed without any challenge? <laughs> anyway, what's the status of the remaining temples of Gaia? Eggman forces have currently secured all locations. Defensive preparations are nearly complete. That'll take care of Sonic for now. Which leaves the problem of Dark Gaia. It'd be difficult to collect every piece scattered all across the world. Searching conventional wisdom banks for topical advice. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Slow and steady in the race. Nobody likes a whiner. Hmm. Isn't there a more efficient way? Some way to, well, I don't know, gather them all up at once. Wait, that's it, of course! <laughs> With this, this, all of my 